another great episode of Best Life Podcast. We bring in some of the most influential, uh, the most community-based entrepreneurs, innovators um, in the country right now. So I want you guys just just stay tuned. We got a really great, great interview going on with Miss Tatiana, aka Harbor Quinn. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get it in in a little bit and we're just gonna chop it down and you know We're gonna chop it up and break some stuff down and get to know her a little bit better Good To have you on best life podcast. I'm glad um, to be you here. Know, I've been definitely um, Following you keeping up. You've been doing a lot of big things out here. So yeah. It's just good to have you know the the you know she goes by the alias Misha Goat if y'all don't know so we got the Misha Goat in the building the big one and she gonna break down a lot of different stuff give you a lot of free game um, just just kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight on her life and what she's doing and where it started and where it come from and Tatiana Tatiana Nicole what I go by um, used to be Harbor Quinn um, I've done a few things throughout my journey of living. <laughs> okay, so, so what's the Harbor Quinn about? What's that? What was that? Give us um, a little bit about that. I was an artist. I used to do music. Um, okay. Travel, I did a lot of traveling, a lot of tours over more, mainly in the East Coast and down South. Um, and yeah, it was just a journey. It was just something I was doing. Honestly, <laughs> I only started rapping to sell more wigs. <laughs> Okay, so you was a, you was a little bossed up entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, use so it, it was, as a strategy, huh? Yeah, it was it was more of like a gimmick. So um, I figured with just a few more followers and people following you, I could sell my wigs for ten times the price. Okay, so that okay. was my concept behind it. Did you get the results you were looking for when you did that? Yeah, I, I you, actually. Were you surprised at anything that happened on your musical journey? You know. Being an artist is more than just being an artist. Um, I used to always be like, I'm not just an artist, I'm a business. Because anything, I felt like in artistry, a lot of people kind of get it misconstrued where it's like, um, I just want to rap or I just want to sing or I just want to um, make music or make art. But people don't understand the business aspect behind it. So I went into it as if it was a business. And, Anything I put in, I want to be able to get out. I hear that. Um, Y'all paying attention? I just didn't sit down. I got up and I moved around. You know, I'm from Michigan and I kind of felt like the support was real limited, but your support going to always be limited around people who think they know you. So That's real. when they have this perception of who they think you should be, anything outside of that perception, they're not going to take heed to or want to follow on so I took my talents elsewhere and they loved me you know it was it was a great journey I did a DJ tour over in New York I met with like DJ Clue okay. DJ Walla and that's what's up that's what's up shout so. out to super DJs out there mm -hmm. that's what they do that's <laughs> what they do so it's like it was a fun time you yeah. know you got to get a lot of experience in the industry kind of get the feel for it mm -hmm. you just kind of decided that you wanted to kind of take your life in a different direction or yeah, so, um, you know, I, I do feel like if I would have kind of just kept on that journey that, I mean, I could have just surpassed and did what um, I felt like I intended to do. But I did make a lot of money back and I did get a lot of exposure. So, you know, it was fun at the same time. And but now it's just like that wasn't really what my goal was. Okay. So it was it was just more supposed to be like a uh right there and then move on to the next okay and so it was never supposed to be my career or my lifelong journey okay well kind of since i'm a little bit familiar with your background it just seems that you were pretty talented in a lot of different areas so were you kind of surprised or were, did you already just kind of know that this is just one more thing that you could possibly excel at and be good at doing so like, um be, so the reason i got into music was to sell more wigs which kind of goes back to um, I went to Dallas I got my license in cosmetology and makeup um, I moved to Indiana I opened up a full service salon we did hair makeup waxes eyebrows anything okay so you was in there going in huh? yeah and um, when I went there like my my reach had just surpassed what I was trying to you know why I felt like my I felt like 
I had reached my max limit of what I was capable of doing there. Okay. So I couldn't kind of. reach no higher. I had reached my max potential living in Indiana. So the big fish in the small pond almost. You kind of begin yeah. to outgrow your environment. So like, because I was there, it was like, I was popular, like, okay. but the goal isn't to be popular. You know, the goal is to make it somewhere else. Yeah, I can dig that. How was the transition from music and being an artist into now what are you currently doing now? So right now I am in financial literacy. Okay, so you're helping us get our money up. Yeah, so I, I do feel like through each um, goal, I mean, each thing that I've done, my ultimate goal was to help people. Um, okay. I don't need, I'm, I, I still love to do hair and makeup, but I would rather do it to people who would appreciate me. Okay. Not people who feel like I'm obligated or just real nasty and rude and you know, things like that, so. So is it more money motivated or is it like passion based motivated? No, it's more passion based because you know, I, I, I was in the process of starting Care Lee Cares, which is a nonprofit for um, wigs for cancer research hospitals, um, cancer research patients. And um, I would rather give them my service. I would want to build a team of me and makeup artists. Um, we provide wigs, full service makeovers for people who would be appreciative of what I'm doing. Sounds like a really great um, venture, honestly. And I'm sure a lot of people could use that service. So what does it look like now transitioning into financial literacy and the goal and the inspiration behind that? Um, so right now I'm into financial literacy. I want to be able to just build myself up to um, my max potential when it comes to my finances and the things that I have learned over the last year um, when it comes to OPM, other people's money. Hey, that's what's <laughs> up. Okay, we, we all need. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a. I guess it's like I'm glad that our people are now becoming more financially conscious, and allowing uh, more people to kind of help us, uh, getting some more expert advice on, um, like dealing with our money. Mm -hmm. So when you say like financial literacy, like what does that look like? What type of financial help are you bringing to the people? So my biggest thing is business credit, um, but in order, you know, I've learned through all of the things that I've <laughs> been reading, that um, people want to build business credit and not use personal PGs, which is personal guarantors, which is your own personal credit. And I feel like that's not the way to go. So um, in the process, I want to build people's personal credit and as I build their business, sustain their business, and then build their business credit and just get them way more money and way less um, interest rates. So when you use a PG, your interest rates are way lower. So you don't have to do net 30 accounts, net 60 accounts. You can surpass that and bypass that just by fixing your personal credit. Okay, so I mean, somebody like me, I mean, my credit is okay. I mean, it's had its ups and downs. So I mean, if, <laughs> if it's not in the best place, you know, um, do you deal with those kind of clients? Are you dealing with like the everyday people that have mm -hmm. all the Messy um, stuff. None of the people that I want to work with the most because I feel like they don't understand the laws behind credit. And that's where we fail at because we don't read and we don't understand. So we just go with what they show us and what they tell us and it just don't be accurate. What they show us and what they tell us is just pretty much to get down on us. I'm sure it's challenges when you're dealing with people with a lot of different things going on in their credit. Um, is it how do you feel about dealing with the younger audience that don't have as much going on? Is it better to work with them or do you feel like people you would rather prefer to work with people that have, you know, bankruptcies and a bunch of different things going on? Like how, how do you balance that? Is it a target audience that you're looking at or is it a general right now or so where do you see that going? It's more general, but I can say that it would be easier to work with someone who already who doesn't have any credit that can just get their credit built versus having to deal with someone who has to get their credit clean, then built. Yeah, I understand that. And then um, on top of that, it's more so just like bank, when it comes to bankruptcies, those number one don't even supposed to be on our credit. So those is gonna be the easiest things to take off. Audience out there, if you got some young adults, you guys are just getting into this adult world and dealing with credit and want to understand how to 
be more progressive and be more proactive in your financial understanding, that's something that they should do is reach out to you and kind of get started with some good strategies to help them kind of build their personal credit up. And if they want to do business, you can also help mm -hmm. with that service as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's Absolutely. what's up. That's up. So at the end of this, we'll have you kind of plug all of those ways to reach out to you and get in touch with you and see if, um, you know, people want to just take advantage of that opportunity. And, you know, you don't actually necessarily have to have a business to get business credit. You can literally take your name and make your name into a business. That's what's up. That's, that's a new game. So, Harbor Queen was a business. That's a brand. Tatiana Nicole, a business, a brand. Okay, that's what's up. So, so you help us find the, understand the difference and mm -hmm. how to use what we have to use that as an advantage. Yeah. So are there any other entrepreneurial endeavors that you have interest in or that you do or what are some other areas of, um, you know, Miss Tatiana's life that were instrumental in this entrepreneurial journey up until this point? I did. I've done property management. Um, when I first moved to Indiana, my father owned 28 properties and being a property manager, yeah, let I'm, me I'm know. Looking for a place, actually. Let me know that I do not <laughs> want to be a landlord. Right now. <laughs> I want to get into the Airbnb game. I would rather sell. Okay. <laughs> but I've done Airbnb. Um, I've done Toro. Um, but it's a lot of little logistics when it kind of comes to that. I was in Indiana, so. Um, okay. So I heard a little bit about the Michigan thing. Um, what, what, what's the what's the inspiration <laughs> and what's that about? Um, so I do have. A few clothing lines. Um, Michigan is actually just Michigan and saying that I'm the GOAT, you know. Okay, so you didn't uh, go to Michigan now. Y'all hear them out there. There's <laughs> a whole lot of people in Michigan. So <laughs> I'm the Michigan. That's what's up. <laughs> okay, y'all better get in little. tune. Get in tune. <laughs> big GOAT in the building. That's what's up. Yeah, so um, it's just a clothing line. And that's another thing, too. So I just kind of feel like I can help pretty much build any business from the ground up and it doesn't matter what industry what they're doing um, how they're doing it I can literally come in and structure their business and get them going have them great vendors have them um, providing great products um, quality products like I've done all of these different things that's what's up so I'm, it sounds like you're really versed and versatile so that's amazing that, you know, you've been able to do a lot of different things and learn and build a lot of wisdom up over time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's helped, you know, um, guide you now at this point, uh, transitioning into different ventures and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I guess, you know, as we talk about business, let's kind of move a little forward into, I'm sure you have a family life. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, 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 I would assume. Uh, so how do you go about, you know, balancing, you know, home and work? What's that look like for you? Um, so, being an entrepreneur, I kind of, then when I was doing music, this is another reason why I kind of like, didn't feel like music was really my lane. It was never really supposed to be what I was doing, but it really made me feel like it wasn't my lane because it took me away from home a lot. And at the end of the day, I do have children to raise and I do have to be a mother. So. Um, I just kind of felt like it was taking me away from being that. So that was another reason why I pushed myself away from that. And then on top of that, I kind of just felt like I needed to reshape how my daughter looked at me and what she thought of me because I kind of just felt like she more was focused on that than the actual aspect of me being an entrepreneur and me being a businesswoman and me actually being smart and intelligent and having things going on. So, so that's real deep. I, I think that a lot of people kind of maybe don't consider that as much. Mm -hmm. I don't think that a lot of people realize how influential we are to our children mm -hmm. and how they are really watching us, what we're doing, and they're beginning to mimic that behavior or um, pick and choose on the things that they're taking from us you know, as parents. So that's really deep that you have, you know, you had the understanding and the awareness to kind of take a step back and, re and really revisit that relationship mm -hmm. so have things gotten a lot better in that regards are you feeling like with well, what you're doing now it gives you the opportunity to kind of balance out being busy and being yeah. you know at home as well these days i actually enjoy being home um it's more up. comforting okay, um, okay. i kind of feel like the goal is to make 
my home feel like I'm on vacation. Okay, I hear that. <laughs> hey, ain't all we are trying to so, do that. So, um, yeah, whenever I'm going through my house, I just want to feel like I'm somewhere else and I enjoy being here. So, that's what's, um, up. That's what's up. There's a balance, you know. Um, Having to work with the kids, having to make sure meals, having to make sure I'm doing business, having to make sure that I'm there for my spouse. Um, there is a balance, but, you know, it's not hard. I feel like as a woman, we're able to adapt into this role because with the willingness, not with the pushback. So it's just like um, I'm willing to be what I need to be. It's not like I don't want to be these things. That's what's up. So I'm sure that's, that's pretty valuable. And I'm sure that that is being received, um, in a real way, because I think it's a, a lot that you have to bring into a relationship and that balance like that. You motivated. What are some things that kind of motivate you to, you know, keep going every day, whether it's just in life in general, or maybe business motivated. Um, what are some things that kind of motivate you? You know, it's it's kind of crazy, but the things that motivate me are figuring things out. Okay. <laughs> Once I, like, look at something, because, you know, stuff be hard when you're looking at it and you don't understand what it is that you're looking at. But the more and more I learn and the more and more I push myself, it just be like the motivation comes from figuring things out. So once I figure something out, it gets me motivated to get it all the way done, you know, um, so in your career, what's the most, I guess, challenging part, saying, saying that you're more into the more problem solving kind of things, what's one of the most challenging parts of the financial literacy or that the industry that you're in that you have noticed? There's so many different ways to do it. So it's just the methods and things like the that. The methods. And so my goal was to learn everything from everybody. And I'm not saying that when I go, when I, when I learn, I learn so differently because I feel like I can be better than someone at something and still want to be an assistant to them because I feel like certain people can show you what not to do. That's, that's true. That's really real. So um, even go back a little bit. When I was in school, you know, I was super eager to learn. Like I wanted to be the best. Anything that I do, I want to be the best. I want to actually go fur. I want to fucking far. I'm sorry. I actually want to go far. So it's just like there's no limit on what I'm going to see, what I'm going to achieve. Um, and I don't put no cap on that. Like I'm willing, I'm always learning. I don't ever think I know everything. Things. But like how do you, I mean, it's, it's not always, I'm sure, success and, and good things. So how do you deal with the failures and how do you deal with the no's and how do you deal with um, the setbacks and things like that? What, how do you maneuver through that? And is there anything in particular that has happened that has kind of helped you get through that or lessons learned or anything like that? Um, yeah, I don't really take no for an answer. I'm just, I'm the type of person that if I can't get through the front door, let me in the window, I'm coming to the back, so really I'm in the side. I'm going to figure out a way. I do not take no for an answer because that no will soon turn into a yes. Okay, so just staying persistent. Just staying and persistent, staying on top of things, just making sure I'm real knowledgeable in what I'm trying to do, just making sure that... Um, so how do you handle like the feedback and do you take constructive criticism well? Absolutely, I take constructive criticism very well because if someone tells me that this is not what they want, I'm going to come back with something 10 times better. Offer you can't refuse. Huh? The offer you cannot refuse. And that's what's up, that's what's <laughs> up, that's what's up. Um, so if anyone that wants to kind of get started more into business in general, or just kind of take that entrepreneurial journey, what are some things or a little bit of wisdom that you can give someone, a younger person, or just someone that's just getting ready to kind of move into the entrepreneurial lifestyle? Um, what are some things that you think they can hold on to or can help them along the way? Uh, first and foremost, I do want to say that obtaining a LLC and a business license doesn't solidify a congratulations. A congratulations comes from when you invest your money and you make that money back. Okay, y'all y'all paying attention to That's that? That's when the congratulations come in. Now, you can get a I'm happy for you and you can do it, 
But other than that, the congratulations come when you're actually making money from it. Um, what are some of the, the hobbies and things that you enjoy doing? What does that look like? What's, what's, what's a fun time for uh, Miss Tatiana? How does that look? Um, really? Or let's say a personal passion that people may not know as well. So is it anything that you enjoy doing that people would not think that you enjoy doing? Or are there any hobbies that you do like to do that are pretty? I like to cook. I like okay, to. Hello, hello, we like to cook. I love to <laughs> okay, cook. Okay, okay. We're going to talk about the cooking then. <laughs> We're going to go see if you really get into um, the pots or not. Okay. So I really love to cook, but I love it even more when the person that I'm cooking for enjoys it. So it just makes me want to do it even more. And that's what's up. That's what's up. So I guess since we're talking about food, what are some of those, these favorite dishes you like to make then? <laughs> if I was over there, you know, you was invited for dinner. One day, you know, um, what would that look like? What's um, some, so you rice, big rice is what? really like a really big thing for me. Um, I can make rice and use it in multiple different okay. ways. You know, a lot of people can't make rice. So <laughs> I might have to give you a little, little bit of points for that. So I know a lot of folks can't make rice. So, so yeah, I use rice for everything. Um, okay. But, yeah, I, I cook, 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 like cook, cook, you know, Big dinners. Yeah, big big dinners like Big Mama House dinners? like well, Bigger than that. Okay, so you feeding the whole, the block and all, Absolutely. Huh? Like, okay. if I'm dedicated to cooking, if it's gonna, if I know I need to cook a big meal for a special event, I'm starting two, three days before. I'm prepping. I'm getting it together. Okay, you, you do, get canned like, greens and all of that, too, huh? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you, you not. end up picking greens and everything. Absolutely huh? not. My kids probably be looking inside my head when they got to pick greens for four hours. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so you're doing that right then. Absolutely. Okay, okay. What's your favorite thing to eat? Um, or a favorite restaurant or just somewhere that you like to go to kind of get a good... I'm real picky when it comes to other people's food, even when it comes to restaurant. Like, it has to be, like, top tier. I'm real big on seasoning, flavors. Okay, so Just, you, you fool critiquing when you there, huh? Yeah, like the, the, I'd rather, because I, I'll be looking at a plate like, I could have just made this at home. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> so, so you, uh, you let, them be, let it be known like a Gordon Ramsay. But Ramsey. I make all type of, I make all type of meals. I'm, just, I'm not just stuck in one lane. I make um, chicken and rice, beans, greens, stuffed chicken, okay. stuffed Potatoes, turkey. Okay, tomatoes, okay. Um, dressing, you know. That's what's up, that's what's up. All the, the good stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, that's what's up. So outside of cooking, um, is there any other things that you like to do? I know you talked about the makeup and things like that. Is that a hobby? I know you, you said you were doing it kind of in a real way, but is that something that's still going on or is it just a hobby now? Or what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I do makeup for myself. <laughs> um, I will do makeup for some a friend or a family if it's their birthday <laughs> okay so, so they get the birthday special so you enjoy That's just doing it. your own makeup then it's a hobby yeah. for you to kind of just sit there and kind of and do teach some and in that way. um you know just share my talent with people not in the sense of me doing it for them but in the sense of me showing them how to do it themselves um a lot of my makeup's real basic Okay, um, don't I, too, it don't look too basic. So oh, this oh. is basic. Okay, yeah, shout um, out to the basic then. But you're making basic <laughs> look real good right now. That's what's up. That's what's so up. So I don't do a lot of the things that a lot of other makeup artists do. So um, when I say I'm like real like um, beginner friendly. Okay, that's what's up. I don't wear foundation. I don't, you know, I do a lot of skincare. Okay, I take ladies, care of my skin. y'all know all about that. So I mean, I'm sure the ladies is paying attention to that. That's um, what's up. And I just keep it real simple. You it know? looks real natural. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I like that. You know, I, I definitely prefer the more natural. I do like the little bit of spice up. But, you know, it's good to see a woman just kind of be able to just more dress up what she already has and just insinuate the natural beauty. So, that's what's up. Um, what does self-care mean to you? And what are some things that you do as far as self-care goes? Um... Okay, so are we getting like surface level self care, or are we like deep surface? I mean, we can we we definitely are like we going into like a wave pool. So you okay, know, we starting so, off slow, but we definitely going to end so up. So surface in the deep. level self care is just pretty much you know um, just making sure that I take care of myself. Um, okay. Make sure I make myself feel great before I I require someone else to make me feel good, and it it could be the smallest thing. 
Um, I can go get some ice cream and feel like I feel yeah, good for the yeah, day, or a lip gloss, about. or go get my nails done, or a nail fixed. It don't matter. Just doing something for myself for that day that I know I took did something for myself. So okay, so just kind of making sure that you do something for yourself mm -hmm. is kind of your idea or definition of self care for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's I can go shopping for the kids and make sure I can buy me the smallest thing. I'm just, but I just know that I ain't gonna spend all my money on them. Okay, I hear that. <laughs> yeah, 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 pay yourself first. <laughs> I, just, I understand that without a doubt. Is it is how important is it to you to communicate your goals and things you want to do in a relationship? Um, communication is very important in a relationship, just because you have to communicate how you feel because. When you hold things in, it just makes things worse and it eggs things on and small things can bother you and little things can make you upset and you're just holding in and dealing with your with what you're feeling internally and it's just never good. Yeah, that's what's up. So it's just good to always kind of be open to talk even if it's kind of uncomfortable or you have to kind of be vulnerable and just kind of get the stuff out mm -hmm. and kind of build. How has your upbringing influenced um, your relationships? My upbringing kind of set me up to know with what I did not want to deal with. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. I mean, that, um, how, I, I can agree. I feel the same way. Um, how I wanted to be, how I always knew I could be, was never the way that I was in previous relationships compared to my current relationship. Okay. Um, you want to be a good woman to someone. You want to be able to... Um, allow someone to lead you who has first and foremost a father or a higher power leading his everyday life because when he has no guidance he can lead you into anything yeah that's real so that was always important for me was to have someone who was spiritual and um you know i just kind of feel like i knew how i wanted to be so once I found that person, I knew that I could be like that, and it just made it so much easier to be that. That's what's up. So I guess as we're talking about, you know, communication and things of that nature, uh, bring in what were what are some of the qualities that are important to you in, in the person that you're with, or you know, when you're you know people that are in that space. What are what's important to you? Um, just number one. Being a good leader, um, having great leadership, being a great, um, I look for guidance. There are a lot of things within myself that I feel like um, I lack thereof. Um, I'm a procrastinator, a big procrastinator. So I need someone that has a little bit more structure to help keep me on top of those things because this is what I want, not someone that's forcing me to do something that I don't want to do. So the fact that I want these things and the fact that a person wants to give me these things, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure that does, you know. Um, you know, as a man, you know, we want to bring leadership, but, you know, it's the willingness and the being able to be accountable to those things that, you know, a person says they want to help them reach those things and keep them focused on, mm -hmm. you know, accomplishing the things that they say that they want to do. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of like it's even better when the person is willing to understand that and kind of get out the comfort zone <clears throat> to kind of make that happen. Um, I feel like pouring love into someone and receiving that love is also really important. Um, I feel like a lot of a lot of men these days, I'm going to say all, but a lot of these men these days, they they just have the wrong mentality and they lie. And I just be, you know, I kind of tell my brothers all the time, like, just tell the truth. Like, they're either going to deal with it or they're not. Yeah. Don't take away their options to choose. And that's what I always never want is someone to take away my options to choose. Just tell me what it is and allow me to choose whether I want to deal with that or not. And if I don't want to deal with that, that's fine. You shouldn't be upset that I don't want to deal with that. You definitely got to respect that. And mm -hmm. that's just real to come to the table in that way, just to kind of make it be known that be a man and, you know, be honest about what you're doing mm -hmm. and where you're at with things, you know, even if it does. And it's, it's the, the biggest thing about being a man is also doing the things that are right, whether they feel good or not. 
So yeah. I know sometimes people <clears throat> have a hard time being honest because they don't want to hurt somebody and this and that, but you end up making it worse by just not being honest. A person um, has every right to blow up anything you have going on when you lie to them. Uh, yeah, y'all, y'all paying attention, fellas, because I know the ladies are definitely, you know, in a, in one accord with that. Um, so how do you, you know, I mean, it's a little bit, a little bit more personal, but how do you show love and affection in a relationship? Um, I just have a real catering spirit, you know, when it comes to my men. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, Shout out to him. Touch, feel, just make sure I just pour all that love into him and cook and, you know, just make sure he has everything he needs. I make sure that he don't really have to do too much of that's outside of his lane. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, I kind of I mean, take care of those things. So, I mean, I know that we all know relationships aren't perfect. Everything isn't, you know, mm-hmm. I always preach all the time. Um, what are some of the, what is the most challenging part of being in a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like there might be some things, <laughs> a lot of hesitation and a lot of falls going on. So, oh, so, so is it that challenging these days? What's no. going on out here, fellas? Are we... <laughs> Are we that challenging these days for... Oh, we ask me that question again. <laughs> so, well, what's the most challenging part about being in a relationship? Like, um... In your opinion, though. Relationships become complicated when there are two people who have different agendas. Okay. They're not really on the same page with anything. They're just coexisting with each other they don't talk about their goals they don't know what each other's doing they don't care about what each other's doing they just focused on what they got going on and what they trying to do so they're not on one accord that's why a lot of relationships just don't work because they're forcing something that they know is never going to make it yeah that's that's really real um so i think that one accordness is definitely important I don't understand why people don't take that time to really communicate in that way. But I'm sure, you know, a lot of times it's surface level. Yeah, but I was just going to say Yeah, that. a lot of people really aren't, like, intentional about their dating, more intentional about what they're looking for and really kind of pursue that so they come with a little bit more substance and a little bit more of a commitment to the situation. So, yeah, I think that when people aren't really that committed and that intentional and focused on this being a healthy and having all those working parts, that it can get problematic yeah. uh, really quick. Has there been anyone in your life that has had the most impact on you and how you are today? Yes. Okay. Who and why? My man, my man, my man. Oh, wow. Okay. So the, so the man trumps the, uh, the, the whole uh, the lineage, huh? Everything. That's what's up. So give us a little bit on why, because that's really important. You know, um, that's interesting. Why do you say, why do you say that? Um, I just say that just because, you know, he could just kind of, help structure my mindset into things that I just felt like wasn't working in my life and you know life has just been come become so much easier with the the way that I've been thinking lately and that's just you know making sure that home is taken care of making sure that I'm doing everything that I need to for my home and being that virtuous woman that I need to be okay. What's up? So that, that's really great. I'm glad that you're having success in those areas and that you've learned a lot. And I think experience plays a big part in that too. You know, as we go through different things and situations, we understand what it takes when we find the right situation. Mm-hmm. So it's like that that plays it's a just, big part. Life in the is game. just so much easier when you're doing the things that you were meant to do in your role. I feel like a lot of women are stuck in the independent lane and they don't even understand the mentality behind you're not independent because you choose to be you're independent because this is what you had to be Mm -hmm. so once they find someone that's willing to take some of that independence away they don't know how to get out of their independent mindset right that's what's up and and then i'm sure that takes balance and i'm sure that gets really it could be a struggle, you know, mm-hmm. if a person is like that for a good bit of their adult life, you know what I mean? It could probably be really difficult to kind of transition and have a more co- a copa, you know, coexisting kind of a togetherness, a oneness, being able to respect each other's independence, but still understand that it's a mutual together, same team kind of concept. If you, <laughs> if you had any superpower, what would it be? 
to be invisible. Invisible. <laughs> so why would you want to be invisible? Uh, so I can just walk past people I don't want to talk to. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you just can just swerve, just swerve left and swerve right whenever you feel like it. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Okay. So what's the what's what's the favorite Marvel character? Favorite character is without feeling like. I don't love the other one. Oh, okay. So, so, you, so you're real committed to, to that. So Your Iron Man. Is important. Iron Man. I love Iron Man. I love Captain America. I love... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not too many. Wanda used to be my, one of my tops until she kind of went against Dr. Strange. So. <laughs> okay. You know, I'll, I'll be feeling Dr. Strange, though. Like that, That's kind of my guy a little bit. Yes, yeah, I've been so, getting into it a little bit more, so I'm I'm definitely feeling his story. Captain Marvel sure. is definitely for sure like probably the strongest. Okay, and I feel like she's like undefeatable. So, her, um, her and um, I do like um, Hawkeye. I do like. <sighs> I Go mean, on and on and on, huh? <laughs> so you like them all. She loves them all, y'all. I love them all. So, okay, that's what's up. I do like Transformers, all the Transformers. Okay, okay. Um, I do like all the X Men. I do like kind of like the fantasy superpower type of stuff. I am a Twilight super fan. Okay, okay. Um, I love Bella and Edward. I just love them so much. Okay, that's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm just a real sucker for like love and um, supernatural superpower type of stuff. Okay, I mean, you the Michigan Goat, the superwoman, you mm -hmm. know, so you got all that, so I'm sure that, that gets you going, all huh? Of that. That's what's up. That's, that's what Harbor up. Queen came from, Harley okay. Quinn. Okay, so that was inspiration <laughs> behind that. That's mm -hmm. what's up. Okay, okay. <laughs> We, we appreciate you coming. I definitely want you to let the people know. How can they get in touch with you? How can they, you know, patronize your businesses? What are, you know, the, the social media platforms? You know, how can they reach you and, and check you out? So, um, I am on Facebook under Tatiana Nicole, and that's with a D, Nicole. D. Okay, look at you. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram under Harbor Quinn, um, Twitter, Harbor Quinn, and then my website for my credit repair is com. So, just make sure you check me out. And also... I am offering free business structure with all credit repair signups. That's what's up. So is there an email or anything like that? Can people email you? Yes. So you can email me at Tatiana Nicole with an E at, um, it's Tatiana Nicole at CaroleeConsultant.com. Okay. So for everybody out there listening, make sure you guys tap into that. Check that out. A lot of great things going on. Wonderful services, great businesses. Um, so I think you guys just can learn a lot and just take advantage of all the great things that we kind of went over today. You know, um, I guess my final question is, is what does living your best life look like for you? Um, living my best life is me being able to enjoy life, um, live life regularly, but be able to move when I want to. Okay, that's what's up. That's mm -hmm. what's up. I can dig that. Travel when I want to, get up and go shopping when I want to, and I don't really need too much of nothing. I'm not trying to be out of the country every week or nothing like that, but when things. I want to, you want to be able to do I want to be able to, to go do it. For being on the show, um, we'll definitely be reaching out. Love to have you back one day soon. Um, so we appreciate you stopping in and just chopping it up with us about, you know, you and everything you've been through and went through and just living your best life. Absolutely. Um, so we appreciate that. Bring more people in that are being instruments in the community to help guide and lead the, the youth and the people and have a lot of gifts and talents that the Father has given all of us to reach higher heights and be the light. So um, that's what we do here. And we just want to make sure we just let celebrate our people and give them their flowers now. Look out for the next episode. All right, we on.